Greetings from the past my fellow time travelers and welcome back to another episode of The Letter. I need to tell you one thing first and foremost. I'm going to pause Okami for the next few weeks because I'm going to school again and that means I'm only being at home for the weekends but only till the beginning of February I think. So that's that. If I finish Letter before that I'm going to continue with Okami and after that I don't know what I'm going to do, you can write down some suggestions down in the comment section. Maybe I'm going to play Outlast 2 or uh, the new Undertale game, because those two are on my register right now, but I don't know when I'm going to play it. So let's do this. Not that thinking about this still matters, when all the lives are in her hands. She's dangerous. If we don't do anything about her and this curse, we will definitely be pushing Daisy soon. I can't let that happen. I've delayed on this long enough. Left all my friends in harm's way after the warnings they've given me. Besides, beneath the terror and the adrenaline that keeps me running, knowing that lies ahead, knowing what lies ahead for Isabella makes it hard not to take action. The paper sitting on the edge of the table calls my attention. At this, light against my hand when I reach up for it. It has caught my eye the night before, but with the lot we still need to go through, I've simply ignored it. The logo emblazoned at the top of the page, however, provides this paper a whole new meaning. Not for me, but definitely for her. A scholarship grant, huh? Oh. I've only ever heard her talk about this once or twice, completing her degree, that is. She rarely goes about it in great detail, preferring to keep it to herself. Perhaps it's the fact that she thinks she's already too old to be chasing after it. It has been five years after all, but I've caught enough snippets of conversations between her and Zack to know she has never given up on it. Oh. Despite how things have panned out with her father, she's one step closer to this part of her life. As silly as this may sound, coming from a friend, I... I'd like to give her the chance to have it. Whether this means stepping out from my comfort zone and figuring what the deal with the curse is, I'll do so. If only to see that same smile on her from that time again. These days, the only moment she seems to show it is when she's asleep. Like right now, no matter how uncomfortable she appears. A smile of my own forms, despite this when I glance at her sleeping form again. She hasn't moved since. Her shoulders rising and falling in slow, even rhythm with her breathing. He won't think she has any problems this way. If only that were true. Mm. <sighs> Sighing, I place the paper back where I've gotten it. Carefully, so I won't accidentally wrinkle or damage it in some way. And finally push myself off my makeshift bed. Isabella shifts when I carry her off from the floor and over to her bed. Oh, but doesn't wake. Simply tucks herself comfortable under the covers I pull over her. Briefly though, she mumbles something to herself and draws in another deep breath. Becca, Ashton's being dumb again. Oh. She drifts back to a deeper state of sleep after, like it hasn't been interrupted by the slightest movement earlier. But the same smile on her lips remain. Oh. Wanna find myself returning in kind. Who sleeps like a rock now? <laughs> it's better this way. Better to leave her to her dream for the moment, which I hope are better than the others I've had. She'll have time to worry about her problems later when she wakes up. For now, this will be another thing I don't want to take away from her. A moment of respite, no matter how fleeting. She deserves it. After everything she has been put through, what I've put her through. In the meantime, I still have two other people I need to check with. Isabella will definitely get in a tizzy if I don't check on them. No. Code Luxburn Air meets me upon stepping out the hallway. Not unusual in itself. This is what Luxburn's weather is supposed to be. A bit cold, damp, for the most part, and more often than not, terrible drab with an occasional sprinkling of rain every few hours. The sky still's clear, but I'll give it a day or two before the weather takes a turn for the worse. I've complained about the awful rains for years, despite having lived here my entire life. I have to admit it though, seeing it in return to the usual feels extremely reassuring. At least, something's still normal in the world, 
when I can no longer think the same for the situation we're in. A nightmare. That's probably all it is. Usually I say, I've been through worse. But that's simply another lie I've often told myself, isn't it? And I've fed myself a great deal of lies through the years, just so I won't have to think about it the next day. Maybe we won't even have this problem if I haven't been running away and ignoring the things, hiding them someplace no one will see. Because I've since believed doing so as a show of weakness. The fuck do I know about ghosts, though? Nothing. What the sack? What does Rebecca? Zeman has shown me photographs, mentioned weird things about around him, happening around him the past few days. Bottom line, he likely knows as much about this as I do. Why else would he approach me? The guy who knows stuff according to him. In the end, all I've done is given him the brush of some reliable guy I am. Hell, Rebecca's probably in the same boat, grasping for anything that might provide an answer, a way out of this. What can any of us do? when all of us lacks any understanding of what's happening. One thing's clear about this, however. That thing is after us because... Because of the letter. Both Rebecca and Zack have seen it, too. She will go after them as well. Yet, here I am, walking up Becca's door, one slow step at a time. A stalling tactic to allow myself some time to put the mess in my head in a better order. How to phrase this when there's a 90% chance she's still pissed about whole different matter? That's the only reason we didn't check on her last night, aside from the ungodly hour Isabella and I arrived. We will we'll only alarm her by showing up in her home in the middle of the night, acting like babbling lunatics, and her anger can last quite a while. These days, it seems the only one she can easily forgive is Isabella, but even if with her... Becca's fuming still takes hours. I run my hand through my hair and straighten out my jacket before knocking. Once, twice, and three times just to be sure she has heard me, even if she's asleep. She's usually awake by now, though. Hey, Becca, it's Ash. Open up. Don't tell me you're still in bed. Seconds stick by. No answer from her. And dread has started to, to creep up. I've been trained to handle dire situations. But the feeling has been doing that quite frequently since last night. My mind begins to anticipate the worst. And in the next minute, concern has mixed in with my thoughts. And I bang my fist on the door. Louder this time. She will definitely be livid. But I'd rather face her wrath than a dead body. Becca! It's Ash! There's something we need to talk about right away. Open up, I know your- Your girlfriend left early this morning, pretty boy. What the heck? So, if you could do us a bloody favor and shut up, that'd be real fucking polite! Oopsie. My hand pauses short of landing another heavy knock. From the other unit, Rebecca's other neighbor peeks in through the store, though I see nothing but a bundle of blankets. I'll say they need help from being devoured by their sheets, but it sounds like he's just fine. He's a huge asshole too. Course of action, so people like him won't ruin your day. Act like the nicest person on the planet. Has done me wonders when I was a rookie patrolling the streets. No need to match his temper. Oh, did she say where she was going? I don't know. She said something about meeting someone or something, in case Filipina girl over there asks. But what am I, her keeper? You know, some people want to sleep in on a bloody Sunday, so keep it down. I was looking forward to this weekend. Thanks, you damn git. Is it the same voice like this, Luke? Well, Maybe. there's no need to be an ass about it. I'll get out of your... He slams the door shut without a warning, but not before muttering a string of very colorful words about me. Probably thinks I won't hear him inside the four walls of his apartment. Jerk. And at the end of it, I sigh. So Rebecca's not here. I must have missed her by an hour or so, but at least she's not alone. She should be safe, in theory. More so, if the person she's meeting with is who I am thinking? Nevertheless, I still can't help but worry. It's an easy thing, continuing down increasingly darker lines of thought. Oh my god! If I think about it that I killed her previously, the next thing we would find is a dead body of hers in the streets. That's awful. <laughs> to act brashly, to find out where she is and go straight there without deliberating on my actions first. There's Zack to boot. Rebecca's not alone, but I can't say the same for the big guy. A simple phone call to the both of them should do the trick. It will ease my nerves at any rate. 
It's better than rushing over to Zack's place or assuming Rebecca's whereabouts and finding out they are not where I've guessed they should be. Assuming the worst will come next, which I'd rather avoid this early. And other reasons? I won't bother them, but an emergency begs for urgency. This is one, right? Even if it isn't, anxiety from concern dulls judgment. Something I most certainly can't afford to lose at any given time, especially right now. Any means to calm it will do wonders for the muddled mess my mind is already in. Pulling up my phone, I thumb through the screen until it ends up on a group with only Zach's, Rebecca's and Isabella's numbers list. Oh, Close friends. Zach, Rebecca, Isabella, Arthur's prof Professor Clark, Chief, Abigail. Okay. Other people will probably say I keep too few friends when it's it's on this. To some extent, it's true. I can easily name about a hundred people I've been acquainted with through the years. Colleagues, blockmates from uni, neighbors, those sort of people. They all come and go. But these three? These three have con chosen to stay for some reason, without wanting or asking for anything. Unlike the others, none has sex kindness. Rebecca's patient. Rebecca's patience. Not a sincerity in Isabella's eyes. One day, these guys are just there. The next thing I know, being with them eases it. That heavy, somber feeling lingering in the air when you stand alone in your apartment. Or something as simple as spending your day off without anyone. I'll say it's loneliness, but this carries much more depth than that. If I can help it, I don't want to lose any of them to some stupid curse. A phone call may be the least comforting thing at the moment. Honestly. I prefer being in the same room with them right now, but I'll take what I can get. Becca first. She will get angry at me for worrying about her. She isn't some helpless damsel in distress after all. She isn't the shy little girl I knew when we were children. We are already far from the people we were back then, but that's more than enough reason to check in on her. I don't have to imagine her taking anything head on. She'll do it, instead of asking for help when she needs it. I don't care if she gets mad at me. If only to know that she's fine. A ring. In the silence of the hallway, it sounds alone might as well be sharp enough to pierce through my ears. Another second passes. Two. Three. But when on the ninth ring it goes straight to her voicemail, a cold feeling instantly lodges in my stomach. Rebecca Gales here. You've reached my voicemail. No. Sorry if I can't get to you right now. Oh, and if this is Isabella, yes. You're free to reheat the food in my fridge. Otherwise, leave a message. Aww. Probably just busy, that's all. Though I still barely manage to keep my voice even when I speak. Hey, Becca, call me back when you're free. We need to talk. ASAP. Becca will be alright. Is alright. She's safe. She's with someone else. In the event that woman shows up, she will have someone with her. Someone she'll be able to ask for help. She's safe. She can handle herself. Becca might have a fearly temper, but she knows when she's faced with something she can't handle herself. Rebecca will see my missed call and she called me back. Though I don't express it enough, Rebecca is someone I consider important to me. Oh, how cute! <laughs> oh, is that adorable? She's been my friend for the longest. Anybody else would have been fed up with me and left. The girl's stuck by me, no matter how big of a jerk I've been. There's Zack and Isabella now too, of course. I'll always be thankful for having them around. The worst times before, however, Becca was there. No one believes it when I say it, but I've surely had my awful moments as a bratty kid and as a horrible teen. Issues? I have too many of them count and have refused to deal with for a time. At least, that's what Andrew likes to tell me. I tend to think nothing of it. It has mellowed down over the years, thanks to the professor mostly. But at times, I do wonder if it still burdens me the way it did all those years ago. After all, I was terrible, especially around the time of my parents' separation. Looking back at it now, I had no reason to direct all my frustrations towards everyone else. When I wasn't a kid who lashed out at anyone, preferring to keep it in to myself and turning those negative feelings into more productive things. I've grown distant from a lot of people because of it. From my old friends back in my old school and the neighbors I've hung out with before moving. A habit I've likely brought with me into adulthood. 
I was just so angry with everyone and everything. All I kept thinking about was myself, wondering why me. In retrospect, I was a selfish little bastard who thought the world of revolt been around me. That I shouldn't have been going through it. I believed my behavior was entitled. That I had the right. Tough times, but she stuck with me. Snapped me out of my little sulk, as she often phrases it, whenever she sees the chance to bring it up. She didn't tolerate my bullshit, but she didn't leave me alone either. If anything, the whole thing made her stick around. Her content may have grown a bit overbearing as the years went by, but she's still an old friend nevertheless. I owe her a lot. That won't change. Aww. Damn it. Where are you, Becca? Another message left on her voicemail. Then on my third call, I hang up. For the time being, I can't do anything more than to wait for her to return my calls. Worrying aimlessly won't get me anywhere. Zack, on the other hand, that guy attracts trouble no matter how much he tries to avoid it. Doesn't help how he hasn't been too hot lately with a lot of people. His mention of plans yesterday doesn't sit too well with me either. He might be the next responsible adult after Becca, out of the four of us, but I've still gotta check on the big guy. Make sure he's doing okay. At the very least, whatever he has planning t on doing. All I'm asking is for it not to be idiotic. He's a sensible guy, I'm sure. However, desperation clings and pushes people to do things. Rational or irrational, it doesn't matter. Clear thinking flies out of the window in the moment you're in danger. And I sincerely hope he hasn't found himself in a tricky situation. His phone doesn't even ring before he answers. Or his voicemail, at least. Hey, it's Zach. Well, a voicemail, anyway. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So, uh, just leave a message, yeah? And no, Ash, you're not allowed to lockpick your way into <laughs> my apartment again. Just do what any other decent human being does and call if I'm not around. Thanks. <laughs> Did he turn it off? Why? I don't want to assume the worst yet. Maybe he has forgotten to charge it? Can't be. That guy can be a bit of a boy scout, even more than I am as a cop. He's the type who has an extra battery for a power bank in his back. If he ever needs it. And he always does. He won't say anything or brag about it, but he's got a quite a rooster of VIP freelancers clients. He won't just leave his phone dead in case he's on the field, particularly when people will likely be looking for him. He always leaves his connection open whenever clients or his friends need him. Zack is reliable like that. Why isn't anyone answering? No, but but. His mobile in and out of range area sounds more plausible, although the thought of it doesn't completely shake off the unease. Unlike Rebecca and I, he took the time to listen to what Isabel said. And even if he didn't believe it, he was definitely the first one to offer help or try to do something. If he ends up trouble doing whatever it is, so help me, I'm going to... Well, I can't be rash. I'm aware of that. Been running the same reminder in my head since the last night. But if something happens, I'm certain my reaction won't be pretty. The added guilt from those times I've repeatedly dismissed him will surely haunt me. Yo, Zach, call me back, alright? I wanted to check in and, uh... Yeah, just please call me back. It's usually a joke between us when I say he's the Watson to my Sherlock. I don't see him as some assistant to put aside until he's needed, like some people like to believe though. He's not some pitied friend I keep around to make myself look good. If anything, he's the one who stayed by me out of pity. No. Zack's the one who puts up with me most of the time, even when he doesn't need to. It's not a case of a cool cop who helped out a, a minority. In truth, I was a hard-headed, hot-tempered and reckless rookie up until I met him. It wasn't anything sudden, and some part of me is still a dead rookie. But I've grown, thanks to him. He tempers that part of me. Considering how our first impression went, I'm lucky he stuck around. Becca and I may have spent a lot of years together as children. But Zack, he's... He's probably the closest thing I'll call to a best friend. Though it's more than that. A camaraderie no words can express. He has my back and I'll always have his. He's a brother I've never had the luck of ever having. Only child and all. And I have every reason to worry about my brother. Oh. 
Becca's neighbor did say she went out to meet someone. No specific names. If I'm wrong and she's not with Professor Clark, then maybe it's with Zack. They have never been close, but it's not the kind of awkward friendship where meeting together remains out of question. Regardless, I continued dialing for his phone number another th three times, like I've done with Becca's. In the end, after the third attempt with no answering, I stop and move to cut the call with a wrecked exhale. Waiting game it is, then. No, I've been trained for those. Hell, I'm used to them, just... Just not when it comes to people I'm close to. Much as I keep reminding myself to maintain a level head, it's a whole different matter when it's someone you know. Personal feelings will likely get involved at some point. It's starting now, actually. With the anxious strings coiling and uncoiling, causing a racket inside my stomach. And that's exactly when the line finally connects. Before he even speaks, my question has already slipped out, including every pent of worry and tension in my body. Where are you? The line's choppy, though I can still make out the words he's saying. Nothing to worry about it then. He's just some place where network coverage is shitty. Can't imagine where at this time of the morning though. Did he go out for a jog? What was that, Ash? Could you repeat that? It's signal shitty here. I asked, where are you? Hell, Zach, I've been calling your number for a good 20 minutes. What kind of shithole did you get into? I've meant it to sound as friendly as possible, to keep things light at least. Instead, only the frustration shows in my tone. Good morning to you too. I should be asking you that question. I've been looking all over the mansion for you. Hmm. I thought you'd be... What mansion? Do I really need to answer that? Why are you even... Please don't tell me that's his plan. A morning visit to the mansion, where Luke Wright is. Of all the big-headed things to do right now, it's the best thing he can come up with. Breaking and entering. I've got a plenty of reasons to rail at him right now. Although, no matter how much I want to give him a peace of mind, unfortunately, it's not the time. No. No, wait. Just get your ass to Isabella's place and hurry. He pauses for a moment. A second of indecision while he seems to contemplate his options. H how urgent is this? In truth, the question, the hesitance and the indecision in his voice has caught me completely off guard. An understanding dawns on me. His decisions to get, uh, go there isn't one born out of stupid impulse. He must have found something. However, no matter how urgent it is, he still shouldn't have gone there. Alone at that. Despite myself, in that split second of comprehension, I allow it to show. A weakness. A simple request bring him with every unease and disquiet, causing turmoil with me, within me since last, last night. Well, it bears a selfish hope that he'll understand even through the unstable signal. That's whatever is keeping him there, he'll be willing to set it aside for now. Pressing enough for you to stop asking questions and get yourself here. Please, Zack. Silence fills the other end of the line again. For a long moment, I assume he won't heed it and I'll have to drive there myself, just to drag him away from whatever danger he's skirting. Thankfully, he agrees. I'll be there in a few. Uh, an hour or two tops. Thanks. I'll see you. How big is Luxburn? It's, it must be huge. Relief washes over me as soon as the call ends. Normally I don't let myself a moment of respite in times like this. Gotta stay alert. Mm -hmm. After that close call, Ashton spent the night at Isabella's, only to be kept awake by nightmares. And an other lost, and with all of his beliefs overturned, Ashton decided to check on Zachary and Rebecca. Unfortunately, only Zachary returned his call. No. Rebecca's still out there, has yet to return any of my messages, but for the moment, I relish in it. This is probably the first time I've permitted myself to do so since last night. Even the muscles in my shoulders have been complaining from all the tension I've taken on. It still annoys me that all I can do right now is grit my teeth and trudge back to Isabella's apartment. Useless. That's what I am in the face of this. A mad dash around Luxburn and Anselm isn't going to help through things. It's not like I'll simply stumble across them on the side of the road during a drive. This city is too big a, p a place for one person to go searching for only two people. I'll be lucky if I even glimpse the hair of either of them. With one last hopeful glance towards the open skies, I slip back into Isabella's apartment and close the door behind me. I might have already grown used to this, but the waiting will always... Always be the hardest part. More so 
when it's people you care about. You're up early. I thought you left. Oh, good morning, sleepyhead. This is not the first time I've seen Isabella like this. Standing casually by her kitchenette, a ladle in hand, keeping an eye on whatever is stewing on the stove, while humming a soft tune under her breath. Five years ago, it has become a common sight after the three of them, including Zack and Rebecca, found a mutual interest in cooking. After that, whenever our schedule allows it, one of them will invite everyone to dinner or lunch, instead of eating out. Rebecca prefers it that way, healthier, she claims. Zack's just too happy to be able to cook for everyone. Isabella, on the other hand, as long as there's food, she's happy. Me, I've been banned from the kitchen ever since the pressure cooker incident. Easier times? Good times. Right now, however, the scene brings an odd sense of normalcy. A strange fit with all of the things going on around us. Not unwelcome. Only bizarre, I suppose. Isabella doesn't follow up on her question earlier, but she does raise an eyebrow my way when I take too long to answer. For that, I only offer a casual shrug in response and a short answer. I check with Zack and Rebecca. I'm just waiting to hear back from them. And that's why when we end the episode. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like, subscribe to my channel. If you're already subscribed, click on the notification bell down below so you get notified when I upload my videos. Share us on all your social media. And guys, I'll see you in the future or back in the letter. High five! First one done, seven to go.